You gonna join me for this episode, Pip? Wanna, wanna join me? Do you? I know you, you really want to, right? Yeah, you do. Alright, that's it. Pippin's taking over the channel. I'm gonna... I'm, I'm gonna leave. Let her take care of it. Alrighty, greetings everyone and welcome again to another episode of Wonderful Aircraft Weekly. Today we're going to be talking about something that a lot of people know of but may not know specifically a lot about or how it exactly works, and that is a sonic boom. To explain how a sonic boom works, you first have to explain how sound waves work when they emanate from an object. Essentially the best way to describe it is picture an object here making noise, could be a airplane, car, or screaming child, or whatever, but it's making sound waves that are coming off of it in equal circles, think of it that way. Sort of emanating from it. Pickers that these circles were all going out like a ripple effect on water. Now that would be a stationary object, would just be making normal sound like that. Now for a moving object, it gets different. If an object is moving, say moving this way to the right, then those sound waves are not going to be perfect circles anymore. They're going to be a little bit squished. So you're going to have a sound wave more like this coming off of that object. And as you can see, the ones up here are a little closer together. And that would increase, those sound waves will get closer together the faster the object moves. And sound waves that are closer together appear higher pitched than ones that are farther apart. And that's exactly when you get the Doppler effect, which I'm sure all of you have experienced at some point. Car goes past you and it goes, and that you hear that low sound after it passes you, but it sounds higher pitch when it's coming towards you, and that's exactly this effect here. Because those sound waves are a lot closer together up at front of the object as opposed to where they are at the back of the object because it's moving this way. Now. An aircraft that's traveling in subsonic flight will not ever be able to catch up to these sound waves. They'll always move a little bit faster than it, so it can never really catch up to them. However, for a supersonic aircraft, that is not the case. As an aircraft gets closer to the speed of sound, it squishes those sound waves closer together, and it gets closer to catching up with them. They're just barely staying out of the way of it. And that would look a little more something like this. Those sound waves become very much compressed against each other, like so. Now this would be known as something called transonic flight, which is just between actual supersonic flight and subsonic flight. And that's usually what you'll see when an aircraft performs a high speed pass at air shows. They won't go past the speed of sound because they create a sonic boom that would deafen everybody and smash windows, but they obviously don't want to go too slow because that wouldn't be as impressive. Now this represents an aircraft as it passes through the sound barrier. As you can see, those sound waves are all squished together. And because they're all squished together, they form basically one massive sound wave that makes a very loud sound because it's so many sound waves together, and that's known as a sonic boom. Now what some people might not know, in fact something I didn't know until a few years ago, is that sonic boom does not occur just once as the aircraft passes through the sound barrier. It'll occur throughout the whole phase of supersonic flight. So even though an aircraft is traveling faster than these sound waves, these sound waves are still there and they're all bunched up right here. And that'll still create a sonic boom for as long as the aircraft maintains supersonic speed. However, occupants on the ground won't hear this sound until the very back of these sound waves reaches their location. Now as far as the visual effects of a sonic boom, the visual effects of a sonic boom aren't actually related directly to the sonic boom. They can occur in other phases of flight as well. But essentially what is happening here is that the atmosphere behind the aircraft, because of the high air pressure of it breaking through the sound barrier or approaching the sound barrier, the air is super cooled and condensed and that creates condensation behind the aircraft. So essentially what you're seeing here is a very extreme version of the residue that is on your window in a very cold morning. But as mentioned, this can occur in different phases of flight, not only for supersonic or transonic flight. This can occur at high G loads. It's the same effect, just in a different way. 
And this can also occur for airliners as well, even though they're not particularly performance-oriented aircraft. These effects are much more noticeable on particularly humid, rainy, or cloudy days especially. Sonic booms aren't only created by an aircraft just going faster than the speed of sound. That high-pitched sort of sharp whine you would hear on a propeller-driven aircraft is actually a sonic boom from the very tips of the propeller blades moving faster than the speed of sound. In the same way, a bullwhip, that crack you hear is not the whip hitting the ground or hitting itself, it's the tip of the whip moving faster than the speed of sound. There's even animals out there that are capable of there's a certain shrimp, I think, that can hit its prey with its claw, and it can move that claw so fast that it actually, for a brief second, moves faster than the speed of sound, and it uses that shockwave to kill its prey. So sonic booms are probably more common than you would think. And that is essentially the basics of how a sonic boom works. Basically just compressing the sound waves together because they can't move fast enough, essentially. They're all moving outwards, but that craft is slowly, slowly, slowly catching up on them till it gets here and all those sound waves get squished together into one huge, loud sound wave. And that is what we hear as a sonic boom. I hope this helps some of you understand the sonic boom. I know I didn't really understand all the little bits of it for quite a while, honestly. And uh, I'm glad I found out because it's actually quite interesting. So I hope you all enjoyed the video and the information that was given. If you have any suggestions, please leave them in the comments for anything you'd like me to explain next, anything you want to see in the future, um, any constructive criticisms, I don't mind. And if you enjoyed it, please feel free to leave a like. And with that, keep calm and fly high, and I'll see you next time.